Today I'm going to be talking about the iPad Pro and all the various apps I use as a digital media student. It's going to be kind of a semi-review type video, just my thoughts on how it functions for digital media people who are into web design, graphic design, some video editing, photo editing, things like that. So to start off, this is a 9.7 inch model. It has 32 gigs of memory and it comes with cellular data as well. So if you're going to be doing a lot of graphic design work, and I mean like graphic design work, not illustration. If a majority of your work is based in illustration, just download Procreate and you're done. That is it, you are set. The iPad Pro is gonna work amazing for you. But if you're looking to do flyer design, brochure layouts, maybe even create some business cards, there is very few apps that you can actually do. So the first app I'm gonna talk about is Graphic. Graphic gives you all the basic tools you need as a graphic designer. It lets you create shapes, it lets you make paths. You can combine different shapes, make compound paths, edit text, expand graphic elements, and really it's the only graphic design app you can get for the iPad Pro that's even remotely fully featured. Graphic also has a more standardized UI for people who are used to using Adobe Illustrator to do graphic design work. It does feel kind of familiar, and I believe it's only $10 from the App Store. Another good thing is that you actually can import Adobe Illustrator files into graphic. The only problem is when you're exporting graphic files, it's kind of buggy. Some of the downsides of using graphic are of course it's not going to be as fully featured as Adobe Illustrator. I found that I worked a lot slower in graphic compared to Adobe Illustrator. That's really just due to the touch interface. You just can't get as much done as quickly. You're also going to find it extremely annoying to not have shift functions. I really wish they implemented a virtual shift and alt keys just so you can do some of those same things you do in Illustrator while you're doing it through a touch interface. There's another app called ProtoSketch that does have those virtual shift and alt buttons. It's not really as fully featured as graphic. It's kind of lagging behind by a lot. It's still, I think it's only like a year old or so, so they're still in development. Next thing I'm gonna talk about is web design. Now there are some web development apps out there that give you very basic functionality of web coding, but really the best one, the one you really wanna get is an app called Coda. Coda is a fully featured web design app. You can design in a large variety of different languages. They have Python, CSS, JavaScript, HTML of course, CSS of course and a few others that I've never even heard of. You can also preview any site you're making. They also allow you to connect directly to an FTP site. If you have your site hooked up on a server somewhere and you're trying to edit it directly, you can definitely connect it to Coda and start editing it from there immediately. What I really love about Coda is its autocomplete function. If you're typing in, you say, a common tag or a common function, it auto-completes that for you. Though the only problem with Coda is that it is $25. Personally, I think the $25 is worth it because unlike all those other apps for graphic design, photo editing, video editing, this is one app that you actually can start and finish whatever project you're working on in the app itself. And moving on to photo editing, the main app everybody should really be using to edit their photos is Adobe Lightroom. If you have an Adobe Creative Cloud account, you can actually use all the features within Lightroom. Not only that, you can utilize their mobile sync functionality, so if you have photos on your desktop and you want to send them over to your iPad, you can just sync it up. If you're doing edits on your iPad, it will sync back to your desktop and vice versa. And they finally, finally added raw support, which thank God, it's been years. I don't know what took them so long. So for a lot of people, it actually let them replace their desktop app. I mean, as long as they have the camera adapter and they can plug their camera right into their iPad, you're all set and ready to go. My only problem is that if you need to do a little bit more specific work, more detailed work, just say there's an object in the background that you want to take out or there's shadows on the face you want to lighten up, get really specific with your photos, you can't really use Lightroom or Photoshop Mobile. When you export out of Lightroom Mobile into one of the Photoshop apps to do some touch up work, it converts your raw file into a JPEG and then you lose all that data. This is something I hope they fix in the future. I mean, I don't think it's impossible for them to be able to transfer from one app to another a raw image that you've been editing. And it's really kind of crippling their mobile system because if you could do that, then you in theory would never have to go to your desktop app. You can do everything right on your iPad and not have to worry about using your computer ever again. My other big problem with Lightroom Mobile is their local adjustments tool. Unlike on desktop where you can just draw over the area you want to be affected, in Lightroom Mobile for some reason they give you two predefined shapes. And while I can see how these can be useful for some edits. For the majority of my edits, these are completely useless. If you're doing really fine detailed work and you only want your adjustments to affect that certain area, it's not going to allow you to do that. You're going to have to go sync it up to your desktop and edit it from there. So this is another case of a mobile app letting you start your work on it, but then you're going to have to go back to desktop to finish. And finally, video editing. Of course, you have iMovie, and then there's another app called Pinnacle Studio, and these are really the only two video editing apps you should consider using for iPad, at least if you're a serious video editor and want to do more professional quality work. And though I haven't personally used Pinnacle Studio, from the description and videos I've watched, 
it's really only slightly more featured than iMovie, you're not gonna get a whole lot more for those $10 you spend. If you're gonna do very light video editing, you don't need to do a lot of effects or cuts or overlays of video or anything fancy. I mean, these would give you the bare minimum, but if you're like me, you like to do color correction on your photos, mess with the audio, anything really intensive, these apps are not gonna be able to do it for you. Really, no iPad app is gonna be able to do it for you yet. And there's also a problem of getting your videos onto the iPad. Me personally, I use a Sony A6300 and I cannot get this iPad to recognize any of those video files. If I uploaded the files to my desktop and then download them to my iPad, they would work fine. But if I wanted to get them directly off my camera, even with a camera adapter, they are not recognized. But I wanted, and I'm sure a lot of other people wanted as well, is to be able to plug in my camera directly and get all those video files onto the iPad immediately and then start editing those videos. But unfortunately right now, for some reason, Apple doesn't support Sony's 4K video file format. So we're out of luck for that. So if you're expecting to do very heavy video editing work, the iPad Pro probably isn't the best option for you. And just a bonus for you guys, note taking of course, the iPad Pro is probably one of the best tablets for note taking. And that really has to do with how accurate their pen is. The app I use for note taking is Notability. It works perfectly. It also lets you back up all your notes into whatever drive you use. I use Google Drive. But my final thoughts for the iPad Pro for digital media students is that while you can start all your work on the iPad, you're going to have to go back to your laptop or desktop to actually finish whatever you're working on, which makes it, for me personally, kind of a bummer and I actually ended up deciding to sell this iPad. The iPad Pro is a great companion device but really not there for people who want to start and finish all their work on this device itself. So that's what made me ultimately want to sell the device and replace it with the Surface Pro 4 which is just a little bit bigger and honestly I can do everything I need there. So a trade off the weight and size for functionality. But if you're a Mac user you can get an app called Astro Pad which makes this an excellent companion app to whatever Mac you have because then you can do all your heavy desktop class applications on your Apple iPad with your pen and it's extremely accurate. But if you're a heavy Windows user like me, I'd say pass, invest in a Surface Pro and it'd probably do a lot more for you. So that's my long-winded review. Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, subscribe. That'd be cool. I appreciate it. But as always, stay sexy and I'll see you sometime.